Hey MVPs, today's segment is not going to be on our vlog, but it's going to be on me in my review of Fear of the Walking Dead. Yes, so if you do not want spoilers, do not watch because I do not like spoiling for Walking Dead fans. Yes, I'm going to talk about what went on and oh my gosh, was it irritating and how you know, what could have went down, you know, the right way. Well, not the right way, but m my opinion of what could have done, they done. So, let's just talk about last episode. Well, Sunday night. Tonight, I just watched it. Okay. Hmm. Saw that coming. The military guys are acting shady. Come on now. You see them shooting people in the far away distance and it's just so aggravating that they're so naive to what was going on. They just didn't believe it. And, they, and it's just like the mom. Uh, to be honest, the mom irritates me. The mom irritates me because she is so selfish. She reminds me of the governor, but female version. If she had to toss you under the bus compared to herself she didn't do it definitely you know she wouldn't even think twice heck she didn't even want to save her help her son at first i mean even though he deserved to uh, happen to him after taking that guy's uh morphine and killing him basically i hope next episode that stadium of all those walkers are going to get unleashed upon them so they can at least get out of that place oh my gosh they have been in that fence area for the last what, three episodes and it's like just moving along slow i mean i know after society collapsed on stuff it's like you know you gotta regain you gotta you know reveal you gotta you know get yourself together but hey it's not like they're getting themselves together they're just waiting around to what the military guy said <clears throat> and oh my gosh that one dad, his family dad, oh, that hurt. He filleted that soldier's arm. Oh, and he, he's done something pretty cool too. After the first layer, it's gonna hurt much more. There's more, some more nerve endings in the deeper layer of your arm, underneath your skin, in the outer layer. That guy just squealed. I mean, hmm. But, uh, it's sad that his wife passed away. He's gonna be angry, man. He's gonna be one angry man. I think he could take the governor on any day. Yeah. So, he's like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, then it took him to, you know, to get everyone to open up and see what's really going on. And, well, <clears throat> people start disappearing. I mean, come on. People are, you, here, when people start disappearing, not coming back, you gotta suspect something. That's the thing, they didn't suspect it. And, I think in 2015 now, if, something, if that really happened, I think we would start you know, suspecting something sooner than they would suspect it. And it takes, they take so long to get their stuff together. It's like, it's like, it takes so long to put one plus one together. Two! Dang, Rick! Rick and his crew. I mean, even just Rick himself at the beginning of The Walking Dead, he woke up from a coma. After so many long days being in a coma, it took them at least two episodes, not, uh, like just one episode really, to understand what was going on. There were dead people. There were dead people coming back to life, trying to eat you, bite you, and make you turn into one of them. Jeez, I think, like, on the Fear of the Walking Dead, I think you'd be ran over a guy, and he stayed alive, and then you see other people get shot and they come back to life you think you come to the conclusion hey this is 2015 we're always paranoid about zombies it must be a zombie and it's just irritating that they just like he was shrugging off the fact and and oh my gosh the dysfunctionality of everything you know the whole you know how the family is and the fear of the walking dead and everything like that it makes rick and his crew Seems like it seems like the house on the prairie. I mean, there, there's like so the, the, the girlfriend's like, oh, you have your ex-wife here. It's her fault. Blah blah blah. 
and then the ex-wife is, you know, oh, I just want to stay here and help and all that stuff. And then you have the drug addict son stealing, you know, drugs from the old man and you're getting the morphine drip and taking the morphine from the old man. And then you have <coughs> um, the rebellious uh, other son he has from the ex-wife. And it's just so, it's just like, it's like everyone just waiting to be slaughtered and it's just, and that's probably how it would be at the end of the you know, world, you know, in the society as well, too, in the zombie apocalypse, too. But dang! And with this latest thing where Operation Cobalt, where basically they're gonna evac the whole military personnel, but kill all the civilians. That's just stupid. And why they secure the air to civilians in the first place? It just makes no sense. And I am glad that dude, the commander dude, did not make it right because he was like, let's get standards. Like, it's like, it's like that. People who think they're like alpha males or something like that, and they're like, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, I'll shoot you. So stupid. And no, he didn't get far. Well, he got far to a certain, to this episode. But it's just, it's just how everything panned out. I mean, like at the second episode, they're like, oh, we're gonna get everyone together, we're gonna go to the desert. What are you doing in the desert? There is no cover. The only cover there is is rocks and cactuses and maybe dips in the sand or earth that you know, whoop, you hide down here. But other than that, the visibility, someone can see from far away. And so you can see if something come after you, especially if it's a walker. But to be honest, I think Fear of Walking Dead focused more on the aspect of human fear and human. Because when it all crap when the crap hit the fan, all the people were like fighting violence and it just you had to fear humans more than Walker at the time. And that's, I think they're starting to realize that you know they have to fear these military. They have to fear these military people because they're the ones who can kill them. And because you know the military people, they're starting to figure out that the military people are going around killing up people that's not in perimeter around this, you know, the quarantine area, like the flashing light, that, you know, in the building at nighttime or that reflection, or whatever, the signal. They got owned, They got killed by the military. And I just, it's just, I hope it escalates a lot more faster because, it's, you know, it's just keeps on dragging and I need to see some walkers. I need to see some defense. I need to see some people. I need someone to take charge. I need, I need, a, I need a Rick. I need a Rick. I need a, only if Rick was like, suddenly, out of the blue, a motorcycle comes right, like, racing up to the fence. Boom! Hits that fence. Suddenly. The guy comes off the motorcycle with a crossbow, and then suddenly Rick comes through. Carl, where are you at, Carl? Carl's up in the thing. I'm right here, Dad. And then Michonne comes flying out from behind Rick. <laughs> and takes out multiple people, <laughs> multiple soldiers. <laughs> but I think that one dude who interrogated the. Uh, I think the guy who interrogated the soldier. I think he'd be like, I think he almost reminds me of Carol a little bit. How they kind of like block off their emotions to get things done. Which, I wonder when they're gonna inter, you know, inter cross their, you know, their paths are gonna cross during their storylines. I think when their paths cross, I don't think it's gonna, I think it's gonna be indirect. I think it's gonna be that point in time. Remember when, uh, here's what I think is gonna play down. And that military evac, they're gonna escape in a helicopter. Because I think, even though that, even though he carved that guy's arm up, I think he legitimately, I think he legitimately loves his, that guy's dollar still. I think he's gonna help them escape, and then get in a helicopter. How's the evac zone? What's well, an evac zone? Helicopters. And what I think that's gonna happen is I think they're gonna escape on a helicopter. Then suddenly, Rick. You know, remember in uh, season one, Rick, right? Walking Dead. He's on the horseback, going through the city. 
and he sees a helicopter in reflection of buildings. And even in the buildings, in the windows, he sees a reflection of a helicopter. I think that's when, you know, indirectly, are going to cross paths in their storylines. I think they're going to be flying through past the city and Rick's going to see their helicopter. I think that's where they're going to you know, cross paths that. But I haven't seen him in The Walking Dead. And that's the only place I can think of. So, but I mean, I like the characters in Fear of the Walking Dead. It's just that they just need to get their act together. They need to start thinking more than themselves. I mean, the reason why I watched The Walking Dead is because I know that the main the characters are they, they're in a dilemma. They're in the dilemma of either keeping their humanity or becoming becoming demons, like the governor or whatever. And I was like, they think about each other. I don't know about next season, though. I mean, it looks like next season's gonna be pretty intense on the Walking Dead. But like, the Fear of Walking Dead, they only thought about themselves. And it just, it just didn't appeal to me. I mean, and also, on the episode where on the Fear of Walking Dead, okay, you notice something's going on. You notice the dead people are coming back to life. You notice you're knowing your neighbor looking like one of those dead people walking, going around attacking other neighbors, and you're gonna get a gun in another house. And you have this random dog barking in your house. He's telling you, the dog's telling you that there's something out there. And then you run into the other house, leave your sliding glass door open or whatever. That's so stupid. All right, I don't know about you guys, but if I'm gonna have to go to my neighbor's house to get a gun, and sneak through their yard, I'm gonna shut my back door first, make sure nothing can't go into my back door while I'm going to get their gun. Oh my gosh, that was so stupid. And poor dog, poor dog, that dog was trying to help them out, but that dog died because their stupidity. I feel sorry for that dog. That's a nice dog. Dang. That's a pretty dog too. But it's like, and then, it just, <laughs> there's so many errors in their judgment. And I mean, they're human, but you think in 2015, where it, ha it happens, you think you, you know, everyone, you know, <laughs> like 40% out of 100% of people, 40% out of 100% are like zombie prepared kind of type people that, that, you know, oh, we can't wait till the end of the world to kill zombies. You think they have some idea, you know, you think, you know, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? My frustration. I just want, I just want to strangle a teddy bear. No, but, <laughs> uh, it's just, I, I, know, I like The Walking Dead way better. Their judgments and their decisions are a lot better. And how do I say this? Even though Rick and you know the cheating thing, you know, the wife is cheating, her cheating thing, having a baby from another man, all stuff, they still kept it together. Yeah, you know, they stayed functional to some extent, and they got things done. Whereas the fear of them dead, the dysfunctional family, they don't get anything, they just stand around and they just speculate. Which, in some extent, yeah, that's true. But man, don't make the whole episode of speculating. You know, get something done. It took, for this year, most, to, at the end of the season, they get something done. And I just, I, like, I mean, it's good, it's a good, it's a good twist. I mean, I'd rather have something to watch than nothing to watch. So. It's pretty good. I like it. The last couple episodes. So look, stay tuned for next episode, though. Hopefully, we get some Walker action. And we get some action in, in the characters as well. At least some running or something like that. Uh, Cause there's like 2,000 Walkers stuck in the stadium. I bet that guy's gonna let them Walkers out, the Hispanic guy, because they're using that diversion to get into the uh, facility. But also, the boy who's on, you know, drug addict. That one guy is mysterious. Yeah, I wonder what he's up to. Maybe he, since he's like a bargaining man, he's probably using the boy, he saved the boy's life to use him as, a, you know, make him feel obligated to help him out too in a tough situation, maybe. I don't know, we'll find out. So, I look forward to next week's episode and stay tuned for next week's review. 
Kenji signing off and see you then.